أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فما أوتيتم من شيء فمتاع الحياة الدنيا وما عند الله خير وأبقى للذين آمنوا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون والذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش وإذا ما غضبوا هم يغفرون الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي once again a small reminder I said four to five minutes last time but I took seven so I don't know what I can do this time but I'll do my best to keep it short بإذنه I want to talk to you today about controlling your temper and your anger but I don't want to construct an argument for you from my own mind I'd rather share with you how Allah Azza wa Jal brings the topic up and the, the way in which Allah Azza wa Jal connects different things together so we can think about it from a really unique, really a divine perspective the first thing Allah says is فَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا in the small passage He says whatever you've been given in this world these are utilities of worldly life in other words, these things are insignificant. These things in comparison to what is coming in the next life is nothing by comparison. And we get hung up on these things and we think this is you lose something or you gain something or something goes wrong, it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Whatever you've been given is just utility, mata'. Mata'a in Arabic means something you use but don't necessarily enjoy. The, Arab, the ancient Arabs used to use mata'a for a brush that they would scrape dishes with. It's something you use but you don't really say, wow, what an amazing brush. You don't do that because it's not something to necessarily enjoy. A broom, a shovel, a fork, these are the things that are mata' in Arabic. Allah says the entire world, everything in it is mata'. Everything you've been given is mata'. In other words, that is something for you to use, but really to use for a higher purpose. And the, and the, the thing to enjoy is the next life. So he says, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ What Allah has is better. What Allah has is better. You might be wondering already, I said I'll talk about anger. Why am I talking about this? It's all connected according to Allah. He says, whatever you've been given is what, you know, فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya is utilities of worldly or this closer life to you. Dunya comes from adana actually, that which is closer, also that which is inferior. So this inferior, closer life, these are the things for you to use here. Then he says, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And whatever Allah has in His possession, خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى It is better, number one, it's better. وَأَبْقَى And it's longer lasting. What Allah is alluding to here, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that in this world, whatever you have, Allah has something better. You have a house, Allah has a better house. You have clothes, Allah has better clothes. You have a ride, Allah will give you a better ride. You have youth or health or strength or ability, Allah will give you better of those things. You have company, Allah will give you better company. Everything Allah has that He's storing for you there is far better. So don't get caught up in these things. And remember, as great as these things are, what Allah has is better. But he added another adjective. He said, abqa, and comparatively much longer lasting. In other words, everything you have is temporary. You have a house, it starts deteriorating. You know, you have health, it starts withering away. You have strength, it starts weakening. You have a, a, a car, a nice car, it starts getting problems. You have friends, they disappear, they, walk, they, they move to other towns, or you drift away and you, you have your own lives. Everything you have in this life that you enjoy, it doesn't last. It doesn't last. So Allah says, why don't you work for something that A is better and B lasts longer. خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى But for who? لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا For those who really believe. And really, you know, when Allah mentions believers, it's not just talking about belief in general, even though that's included. It's specific to the ayah. Who really believe that this stuff in this world is not as good as the stuff in the next. This is for those people. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they place their trust exclusively and their reliance exclusively upon their master. What that implies is, it takes a lot of trust in Allah to really, really believe that what He's offering you in the next life, something you haven't even seen or touched or smelled, only heard about, it's enough for you to trust Him just based on His word. That takes trust. So He says, for those people, what they have in the next life is better and longer lasting, but it takes belief and it takes trust in Allah. Then He says, وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ those, those are the very people, in other words, people who prefer the next life over this one, and understand this to be utilities and things to use, they, they keep themselves away from the most major of the sins. Again, a side point here, 
There are minor sins and there are major sins. Your first priority, get away from major sins. And sometimes you're doing major sins and you're talking all the time about, oh, I shouldn't do those minor sins, right? But get away from the major sins. Priorities come first. Kaba'ir al ithm. Then he says specifically, wal fawahish, and all forms of shamelessness. Again, this is not a talk about shamelessness, this is about controlling anger. And I haven't said anything about controlling anger yet. How come? Allah says they stay away from major sins, they stay away from all forms of lewdness, vulgarity, shamelessness. Then he says, وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ And whenever they get angry, I'm not even going to finish the sentence yet. But now he's bringing up anger. You see where he brought up anger? First he told you what is in this world isn't, is nothing compared to the next. Because if this world is everything you have, when things go wrong in this world, you get angry. But if this world is nothing compared to the next, whether you gain or lose, or something go, goes wrong, it's not that big of a deal for you. You can easily say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ No doubt, we only belong to Allah and to Him we have to be returned anyway. And it's easy for you to calm down. That happens when you really internalize the first lesson. The second issue here was, Allah mentioned staying away from major sins. And he specifically highlighted one of them that in this short talk I'll highlight for all forms of shamelessness. What is shamelessness? It is the inability to control your temptations, your emotions. You have an urge and you let it out. You have an urge to see something and you don't hold back, you look at it. You have an urge to go somewhere, you can't hold yourself back, you go somewhere. You have an urge to contact someone or be with someone and you do it, you don't hold back. No, no matter if it pleases Allah or not, that's not on your mind. You can't control yourself when it comes to these urges. Well, if you lose control over these urges and these emotions, then when it comes to your anger, you'll be out of control too. So the one who is shameless is also easily one who has no control over their temper. But the one who can guard their shame and control that emotion, which is much more powerful by the way, because all of us have temptation to, you know, towards shamelessness all the time. We have to guard ourselves from it all the time. If you could do that, holding yourself back from anger is so much easier. So much easier. But he, did, he goes even further. He doesn't just say, now, I didn't translate it yet, right? I said, when they get angry, whenever they get angry. But I didn't say, whenever they get angry, they calm down. He said, whenever they get angry, hum yaghfirun, they forgive. Now it's one thing to get angry and calm down. That's hard enough. But it's, I mean, imagine this. You, somebody made you really upset. And Allah says, these people who really trust Allah and want the next life more than this one, when they're really angry, that's when they forgive. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. We don't even forgive when we're calm. And Allah is saying, if you really want to be the person who prefers the next life, learn to forgive when you're angry. What a standard He set for us. By the way, this is not mandatory. This is for people of the highest caliber. May Allah make us from them. Because in the next ayahs, Allah says, yeah, you can get angry. You can take revenge. The, the reward of something bad that has been done to you, the payback, is something bad you can do right back. Somebody slaps you, you can slap him right back. This is allowed in Islam. Revenge is allowed in Islam. Right? Just seeking justice rather, not on a personal level, but through, through the system of justice. It's, it's allowed in Islam. But Allah says, if you can still learn to forgive, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ If you can learn to forgive, lovingly forgive, and reconcile, and what's the previous ayah said, not just uh, uh, calm down from your anger, but forgive on top of that, then what's the reward? Why should I then not forgive instead of forgiving? Uh, or why should I take revenge? And instead of taking revenge, why should I then forgive? Why should I pick one over the other? He says, فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ He says, then the reward... Remember before he said, Allah has is better? And it's longer lasting? This time he says, if you're able to forgive someone, despite your anger, then let me tell you, the reward is so immense, it can't even be described. The only thing that can be said is, عَلَى اللَّهِ It's on Allah. In other words, Allah will take care of you. Allah will take care of you. It's so undescribable, the only thing that can be said is, it is on Allah to take care of your rewards. SubhanAllah. May Allah make it easy for all of us to, to keep our anger down and to keep ourselves calm and especially give us the ability to forgive, particularly when it comes to people in the family. Particularly when it comes to people in the family. Because we're very unforgiving to people in family. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim.